Okay, last week we began our lessons on the remaining hermetic principles, which are the principle of correspondence, rhythm, and cause and effect. And these three principles are obviously very closely related to one another. And at the end of our last video, we were discussing how we need to get away from the rat race, which we call life. I was explaining how we are peculiar people, that we are not normal, that we are aliens, if you will, and that we are made to be set apart. Well, I want to talk about this rat race a little bit more as we continue the lesson on these three remaining principles. In this rat race that we're in, we're always on the go. We're always hurrying, hurrying, hurrying. And in a world of hurrying, nothing grows. Because everything in this life has seasons. Everything has a required time to grow. A season that is needed for elaboration. A season for brewing. A season for planting. And a season for harvest. So in order to reach this inner harmony... You know, it's necessary to establish an inner connection with our own being. We must do this in order to put into practice something that's very difficult. And that is to not be what others expect of you. We need to learn how to respect our rhythm. And equally important, we need, we need to learn how to respect the rhythm of others. Most people are like spinning tops, just twirling around, some faster than others. There are some that even stop spinning altogether, while there are some still that are so sporadic in their spinning that they end up running into others and affecting other people's lives. So, how do you know when you are out of rhythm? Well, the more wise you become in these things that you're learning, the easier it's going to be for you to discern such things. But just trust that you will simply know. It will be an umption. It would be a gut feeling as if it's coming from your very soul itself. And that's because it is. When you feel that way, it's because you are out of sync with the universe. And that in itself will bring discomfort. For now, to see if you're in balance with the universe, just ask yourself, am I happy? It's that simple. If the answer is no, then you're not in proper rhythm. You are not in sync with the universe, and the result is discomfort, and the result is disease, dis-ease. I come from the counseling field, and there's many people that come to counselors and search for a quick fix or a quick lesson in personal growth. They arrive with a level of saturation that's so high that some search for a quick response when they're in desperate times. Well, I'm here to tell you that... You cannot use magic properly or effectively when you're out of sync. We must understand that it's essential for processes like magical healing and the reconstruction of one's self-esteem to take their time. The greater the anxiety, the less chance of reaching that vital flow, the flow which gives us a well-being, that flow which gives us a calm balance. If you are on a rhythm, then I suggest that you analyze your habits. What do you do in your day-to-day -day life? What facts bring you anxiety? What things bring you dissatisfaction? In regards to this principle, as a way to daily check yourself, please remember these two sayings. If nothing changes, nothing changes. If you keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you're getting. Or in other words, if you like the way life is right now, then tomorrow I'll repeat exactly what you did today. And if you don't like your life the way it is now, then change it. Put into practice the things that you are learning. Okay, one last principle to discuss, and then when we're done, we have laid down our framework for the rest of the lessons. And that's the principle of cause and effect. Now, and I know I talked about the principle of cause and effect pretty directly when talking about other principles, but I think it's important that we delve into it a little bit deeper. Every, not some, not most, every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens in accordance to this law. There is no coincidences. Chance is but a name. For this law not being recognized, there are many planes of causation, but nothing, absolutely nothing, escapes the law. Okay, hermetics. They understand the art and the methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect. And they do this by becoming causers of the effect. In other words, they take charge. They win the battle. The battle or the good fight. They win the energy battle. 
that we have been discussing in these lessons. They are being masculine. They are being dominant in their energy, controlling the environment around them. A practitioner, he or she, knows how to utilize many tools, including the principle of cause and effect. An advanced practitioner, if wise, can affect a large mass of people, and these masses, they can be carried and used like pawns, pawns on the chessboard of life, if you will. So how do we become such a chess master? Well, we start simple. If you want me to listen to you, don't shout at me. If you want my respect, respect me. Because if you don't like the effect, you shouldn't provoke the cause. Part of maneuvering in this matrix is looking at these principles before they affect you. Start to look at the world in vibrations. Start to look at the world through depolarized lenses. Start to look at the world knowing that every action you take, not some, every action you take causes an effect. And being mindful and wise to cause the effects that you desire. Let's see. Well, if you want to know your past, look at your present. Because that is a result of your past. And if you want to know your future, pay attention to your present. Because the present will be the cause of your future. You see, life it is a continuous learning lesson. You should allow yourself to be a humble student. For it is through our humility that we become wise. And it is through humility that we retain true understanding. Understanding that an action always, not sometimes, always produces an associated effect. Remember as an example that words have power. Power to wound and power to heal. Remember that your thoughts, they generate emotions. And it's your emotions that you view the world. I mean... We all have basic knowledge about the relationship between certain causes and effects. The world of machines and engineering, for example, provides a great illustrative lesson on the subject. Although in reality, they're not very profound. They are simple. They are not complicated. If I press the power button on my computer, it will turn on or off. If I fix the brakes on my car, it will save me from an accident. But we, us humans... We are much more complex. We are much more complicated. We don't have buttons. We don't have instruction manuals. In fact, sometimes, even when we interact in the same way with two different people, the effects are very different. People are complicated. We as humans, we have a delicate set of emotions, a delicate set of likes and values. And these emotions, these values and likes, they create various reactions and responses to the same stimuli. In regards to this principle, when I deal with people, I keep it simple. I just remember that every action, every thought, and every intention is like a boomerang. Sooner or later, that behavior, that word that you haphazardly threw at somebody comes back at you. Why? Because a tree of life is like a battery terminal. The same terminal that we discussed in the law of gender. The tree of life has an energy flow to it, and what you put into that energy flow comes back to you. So we need to be mindful of the type of energy that we put out, for it can and will come back to us. Okay. Whenever you're suffering from today, whatever is taking hold of you in this complex present time is linked to a cause that you should look for in the past. Magic and hermetics makes us free. We are free and powerful creatures capable of choosing what to do, what to say, and what to think in every moment. And we know what we know and we utilize the laws of the universe to produce specific results. This is magic 101. We first have to learn to have magical balance and to manifest what we want inside before we can manifest what we want on the outside because both have a cause and effect on the other. But trust me, it is much easier to change you than to change others, as I said e earlier. Okay? Because we are the result of our thoughts. We are the result of our words. We are the result of our actions. They are the cause of our current life. We are not only what we do and say, we are, first and foremost, what we think. And here we go again. This is why I'm always stressing that you guard what you let into your mind. For it is in the mind that the battle takes place. This is why we reject and accept. 
And it's why this was accepting and rejecting your reality was the first action I asked you to complete. And I continue to ask you to complete it every single day for the rest of your life. It's essential. It's all about the mind. This is where the battle is. Change your mind, change your life. I'm going to say that again. Change your mind, change your life. If your thoughts are taken up by fear, or if you use words such as I can't, or I don't deserve, well, then your path will be overtaken by swamps and barbed wire fences or obstacles that you must try to get past each and every single day. You are creating a life full of obstacles. I am. I am. M. These are the two most powerful words in the universe. Be wise as to how you use them. Yes, we need to pay attention to the cause in order to achieve a better effect. We could all live happier lives if we were a little more concerned with our attitudes, with watching our words, and with trying not to harm or bother ourselves and others. Yes, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law, but most forget the second part of that law. And that is love is a law, love under will. In other words, do what thou wilt, but do it with love. Love and gratitude, which are the two highest forms of vibration that one can emit. Okay, that's it. Hooah, we are done with the framework. You have now learned the hermetic principles. <laughs> so now what? Well, now we start to talk about your craft. Now we start to talk about magic. In our next lesson, and probably our next few lessons, we're going to talk about magic 101 and how it relates to our conscious and our subconscious mind. And when we do that, we'll start to dive deep into the tree of life. As always, be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment. This is very helpful. It helps us promote this content and helps me reach my goal, which is to awaken the world one person at a time.